welcome to town. Everything is so strange here, but I think I'm getting used to it. A rogue journalist. That's something I can get behind. You seem cool. I don't want you getting eaten or something. Can't wait to read about it in the weekly. Season 2, Episode 5. Secrecy Loves Company. I mean, I told you if you needed anything that I'd be around. Yeah. How's it been up in Bluff? I've never been to another cryptid cave town. It must be so cool up there. Well, it's definitely cold. Things have been... interesting. We've only really been in town for two whole days. But we got to meet the mayor and see the town, which is even smaller than Water's Edge. No way. I didn't think that was possible. It sure is. Yesterday was a lot of hanging around, waiting for the city council meeting that's happening today to address all the earthquakes and floods and sea beast problems. Sea beast? That's crazy. Sounds like you have your hands full. Only a little. So, you said you needed to ask me about something? Yeah. Okay. So, I've been working on my first story for the weekly, and I just... I don't know. I only have the intro so far, and Roger seemed to like it, but I wanted to get your opinion. Oh, of course. You want to read it to me? Oh, um, okay. Uh, well, so I didn't really know what to write about for my first story, and then when I asked Roger, he said to write what I know so I can introduce myself to the community, sorta. So I- You don't have to explain yourself. Just read. Okay, here goes. There are 317 permanent residents of Water's Edge. 76 of them are under the age of 18, but there's not a single conventional school in our small island community. Maybe that's because of funding issues, lack of cryptid teachers, or a general disinterest in investing in a school when there's a few good ones right over the bridge. Whatever the answer, the result is 76 cryptid kids of all ages attend school on the mainland with human children each and every day. They are taught by human teachers, make friends with human kids, and join extracurriculars run by other humans in the mainland community. While the rest of Water's Edge's residents associate with humans for just a few months each year during the summer season, us young people in town are with them each day, giving us a different perspective on humans, their lives, and how, deep down, they aren't too different than we are. That's, uh, that's the intro so far, and I was going to talk more about individual relationships between human and cryptid kids, obviously with the cryptids only. I got a couple interviews with some of my friends that I was going to include. What do you think? I think it's excellent. Really? Yeah, it's a solid idea for a piece, doing a deep dive into something that you find interesting in your day-to-day life. I think people in town will enjoy it. There were a couple of things I would tweak, like the use of us young people should be in the third person, but that's all detail editing stuff that Roger can help you with. It sounds like it's going to be a great first story. (sighs) Thank you so much, Avra. I'm so glad you like it. I'll get to work on the rest of it, so it'll be perfect. Okay, but don't stress out over it. You've still got more than a week until your deadline, and I've got a few stories that can fill in around this one. Just take your time, and it'll be good. Will do. Thank you, Avra. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. She's gonna publish that? Jesus Christ, Reese. Where the hell did you come from? I thought you were out cleaning a boat with Lizzie and Francie. I forgot some stuff here. It sounded like you were almost done, so I thought I would invite you to come with. Sorry. It's fine. Uh, yeah. I'll come along. I really didn't mean to eavesdrop. It's just... I heard that girl saying that all the kids in your town go to a human school, and it kind of blew my mind. Didn't you go to a human school? I did, yeah, but around here I'm the exception. Folks don't like cryptic kids to be doing that sort of thing especially the older folks. They don't trust a human as far as they can throw them. Well, the Water's Edge residents are more open to humans. We do let them in as tourists every year, and they seem pretty okay to me. I mean, we make money off humans, too. We just sell our goods in their towns instead of inviting them here. I don't know. I don't mind humans too much. Some of them are good, and some aren't. Some make damn good TV shows, but I'm not looking to be 
best friends with one anytime soon, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. I've seen that seagull try to dive for fish about seven times, and every time he comes up empty. That feels like it's supposed to be a metaphor or something. I bet you $10 he doesn't get anything. Why would I bet against that? Reese already said there weren't any fish left in the waters around here. Right, Reese? Reese! I don't think he can hear you over the music. Ugh, good. We haven't had a minute alone since Town Hall yesterday. I've been dying to talk to you guys. Ugh, same. I think we were right about something weird going on around here. I mean, besides all the Nessie natural disaster stuff. What happened? Well, when I went back to get my scarf from the meeting room, I overheard Sybil and Mary Lucinda talking about secrets. Specifically, Sybil's secret and how she could have jeopardized it by making a weird phone call. Sound familiar? Sybil's the one who made the creepy call? I knew there was something up with them. When they believed that plant power shit, I could tell they were not listening. I couldn't think of anything else, okay? This whole town and their intense human hates got me on edge. Wait, wait, so... Was the secret that she made the phone call? It didn't seem like it. The mayor was saying something about keeping stuff hidden that didn't seem related to the call. I totally remember hearing her voice in the call now. She was the one yelling. Yeah, she was yelling for Reese. Of course, I bet they were both in on it. But how the hell did they get the recording of you, Av? It's not like those recordings go anywhere else except on your tapes, right? I mean, my therapist listens to them, but... Oh, shit! Yeah, that's it! What? Ben told me that Julius tried to keep digital records for a few weeks, but he's a multiple centuries old ghost and has no idea what good password protection is. I don't think he has anything online anymore, but he probably had copies of your tapes on there. Reese did have a pretty nice computer. I could see him doing some basic hacking on that. Okay, so... So they made a weird phone call to lure us to town. But why? It seems like they just want our help. Or they plan on killing us. (laughs) And killing Shia? (laughs) I highly doubt that. When Sybil was talking about her powers, Reese used some word... Fringe, I think? Is that something? Uh, I'm not sure. I've heard of fringe cryptids once or twice, but we really don't use that term in Water's Edge. It's a blanket term for cryptids whose powers are a little more dangerous than average. Like Lygia? Mm, Yeah. She and a couple others who live out there would probably be considered fringe. I don't know. It's a weird classification. I don't like to use it because it just feels like a bad word or something. So you think that's Sybil's secret? That she's fringe? Maybe. Her power doesn't seem that dangerous, though. I mean, we have only seen her happy. Fair. I just think that maybe... All right. All done with that. How does she look? Like a boat. But a really clean boat. (laughs) You guys are a riot. Come on. I think we have just enough time to run home so I can shower and still get to the city council meeting on time. For a small town, they have the best city council meeting turnout I think I've ever seen. When I was working in Philly, I would go to meetings that had like 30 people and it was considered a rousing success. Must be a small town closeness sort of thing. Or a terrified of what's going on sort of thing. Where should we sit? I think Shia said they would save us some seats, but I don't... Oh, there they are. Hey guys! Glad you made it. For a minute I thought I would have to sit through this on my own. Your dad didn't want to come? No, he's not a big fan of crowds. He made me promise to give him a full recap when we meet up later, though. Uh, where's Reese? I thought you guys were cleaning boats or something. He was cleaning. We just tagged along for the ride. He said Sybil needed him for something. Gotcha. They seem close. Oh, there they are. Over there in front. I wonder if they're a couple. Hmm, I don't think so. 
From the way Reese has talked about Sybil, they seem more like best friends. When has Reese talked about Sybil? He and I were chatting this morning. I got up pretty early with the jet lag, and he invited me to walk to the corner store with him. That sounds very quaint. Just keep your guard up, France. We don't know what he's hiding. I know, but... Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Emergency City Council meeting. Thank you so much for being here. As you all know, Bluff has been facing some unprecedented problems lately. Building leveling earthquakes after years of non-existent seismic activity, floods and fires that fall on their wake, the disappearance of the fish we rely on so heavily for food and trade, and now a sea monster whose intentions and whereabouts are unknown. Yes, I know many of you were unaware of that last one. We know about as much as you do when it comes to this strange beast lurking in our waters. These could all be connected events, yes, but Bluff could also just be experiencing some bad coincidences. Either way, I and the rest of the governing members of Bluff have decided that we must put a plan into place to address these problems. While we have some very preliminary ideas, we call this meeting to hear from our people. We respect and value your opinions and ideas, and we would like to hear from all of you who wish to speak. Before I turn this over to Councilman Leesk, I would like to quickly introduce a few newcomers we have to our island community. Our old friend Shia Fisher has come all the way from Water's Edge with several friends in tow that would like to help us in any way they can. This is awkward. Please make them feel at home during their time here. Now, Councilman Leesk. Thank you, Mayor. Friends, we are facing some hardships here in Bluff, and I would like to start off by saying I am sorry. I am sorry we have been unable to protect your homes, your livelihoods, and your island through all of this. And we strive to do better, and, and to start, we need to hear from you. So please, if anyone has something to say about how they have been affected and what they believe we should do, please raise your hand and... We need to kill the monster. It's not a monster. Oh, Mrs. Weber, thank you for your enthusiasm, but maybe we this can... This sea monster is clearly the cause of everything, and the mayor and city council have been hiding it from us. I bet it's another one of those fringe cryptids that they love in fighting into town. Well, we shouldn't stand for this anymore, right, Bluff? Now, Mrs. Weber, we Bluff should... used to be a safe, happy community before these fringe freaks showed up. Now, this talk is extremely If we get rid of them, I bet everything will go back to normal. Am I right? Then we should... That is enough. <sighs> Mrs. Weber, I will have you removed if you continue to try to incite hatred and violence in my city council meeting. Does anyone else have something to say? We'll take raised hands only. Yep, just like when I was a kid. Bluff never changes. The rest of the town hall meeting was pretty normal, at least compared to that woman's outburst. All that stuff about fringe cryptids and scapegoating was a lot. I mean, I was on the boat with Reese and the gang when we saw that creature in the water, and it sure did seem angry. I don't know if it was a cryptid or a freaking dinosaur. I've never seen a cryptid like that, but God knows I'm not the expert. Ooh. Oh. This town is putting me on edge. There are too many secrets and too many shady characters for me to feel any semblance of comfort. And if they're brazen enough to attack fringe cryptids at a city council meeting, a group that seems to be relatively significant in Bluff and includes the mayor's daughter, I don't want to imagine what they would do to me if they found out I was human. It's very different here compared to Water's Edge. I don't know what I was expecting exactly when we came out here, but I guess a part of me believed that every cryptid town was the same. I should have known better. Just like every cryptid is different, why wouldn't every cryptid Cape Town be too? You should travel more. You wouldn't believe some of the towns that cryptids have made. Shit, Sybil, you scared me. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt your... Talking to myself? Taking notes? You can call it whatever you want. I'm sure you'll see me doing it again eventually. I'm sure I will. So, liking Bluff and the unabashed xenophobia that some of our residents are super into these days? Oh, you heard that. Yeah, and I don't blame you. Most of them are pretty accepting, but a few are just stuck in their old ways. 
add fear into the mix and more people start siding with the few. Protect the homeland sort of bullshit, you know? Yeah. How, uh, how much else did you hear? Most of it. I'm sorry. I know you're feeling really nervous right now, but that's just because of me. I heard you talking, and I didn't want to get too close and ruin your mood, but... Well, I, I needed to talk to you. About what? I know you're not quite comfortable with us yet. A little wary since we haven't been giving you all the details on everything, but I promise you, it's been for a good reason. There's a good reason behind hiding the fact that you were the one who called me a month ago? Wow. I didn't think you knew that, but okay. Yeah, that was me. We were in trouble, and I heard what Roger had said about you to our editor-in-chief, how you were so great and brave and special. I could just tell you were the missing link that we needed to fix whatever's going on here, but I was afraid of admitting my intentions. Why? I don't know. What if you weren't interested in helping some random girl you don't know? What if you don't believe the shit she tells you, because why would you? So, you disguised your voice and stole a private recording from my therapist's archives to scare me into paying attention? I know. It was stupid, okay? And selfish. But I needed to meet you. I needed you to come here to know if... If you were who I thought you were. Is, is this about the human thing? What, are you, are you going to expose me to both her towns? Because I'll have you know that Lizzie and Francie and Roger already know No, that... no, not that. I don't care if you're human. Avra, where were you born? Alaska. Where in Alaska? Uh, why do you need to know? You were born at Dr. Thatcher's General Clinic, right? In Petersburg. I... Your mom went into labor really early while she and dad were on a baby honeymoon or whatever the hell they call it, so she had to deliver her twins in a little general practice clinic in Petersburg. But one of them didn't make it, right? One of them had ghastly gray skin and no pulse, and they gave that one to the nurse to deal with. A stillborn. But you were fine. Very small still, and needing a lot of care in the NICU back in Juno for a while, but generally fine. And of course, your parents took the stillborn's ashes home with them, remembering what might have been, but still happy with what they got. And you grew up an only child. I, I, how the fuck do you know all of this? Because your twin wasn't a stillborn. They were a cryptid. Oh, Come on, that's bullshit. It's not. Avra, it's me. I'm your twin. They thought I was dead, but Lucinda was working as a nurse at the clinic, and she knew what I was. She decided to bring me back to Bluff with her and raise me. She told me about you and your parents, and I've been looking for you for years. No. No, there is no way in hell that I... That we are... Are you insane? I'm a human. My parents are human. We cannot be related. Why not? Humans have cryptid kids all the time. According to my research, there's never been a human cryptid set of twins before, so that would make us a first, but it's not that crazy. I mean, we're no. obviously fraternal. No. Sybil, and... stop. You can't actually believe this. Maybe this is a fun little prank you like to play on people or something, but you're taking it way too far. I'm an only child, okay? And my twin who died as a stillborn was a boy. Yeah, I'm trans. Born with a boy's body, actually a girl. If that's the thing you're going to get hung up on about this whole thing, though... You have an answer for everything, don't you? Yes, because it's true. Avra, please. My dead name... My dead name was Elton. I don't enjoy saying it or thinking about it, but I'll do it to prove to you that I'm your twin. Well... Well, I... You and I both know that the only way I could know about that was if I snuck into our parents' house and found the name on whatever urn they keep my fake ashes in, or if I'm actually who I say I am. Please, Avra, I'm just asking you to trust me. I... I can't. Why not? Wait. Wait. Here. A picture of mom and dad holding you at the clinic. They took two because Dad blinked in this one. Lucinda took it in the hopes that if I ever wanted to find them, this could help. Oh. Do you trust me now? I... 
I guess I do. Thanks for listening to Season 2 of Cryptid Cape. Secrecy loves company. The show is created and produced by me, Victoria Pereira. I also voice Abra. The voice of Francie is Aubrey King. The voice of Lizzie is Christina Rose Hargis. The voice of Shia is Angelique Vestukjian. The voice of Sybil is Caroline Byrne. The voice of Juliet is Amy Acevedo. Voice of Reese by Kyle Goss. The voice of Lucinda is Lynn Pereira. The voice of Mrs. Weber is Marilyn Acevedo. The voice of Councilman Leesk is Aiden Gibbs. Our theme song is Pink Night in Ohio by Ryan Anderson. The other songs used in this episode were Because for Everything There is Someone by Patches, Royal by Slender Beats, and Passing Time by Kevin McLeod. Our story editor is Jennifer Wong. Our cover art was created by Christy Dupre. Be sure to subscribe to Cryptid Cape so you don't miss our next episode. We publish every two weeks. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Cryptid Cape for some fun bonus content. Share this episode with friends or leave a review if you enjoyed it. It means the world. See you next time.